Bienvenidos, welcome a todos. Um, so I was like talking to my mom today and I don't really know like exactly, I don't know, I'm just gonna kind of do a, a mission report. Um, I guess I will talk about how I was getting out of the country, leaving Argentina and what I'm doing now and then my plans, um, or I guess my plans for the future aren't super crazy, but um, I'll talk about my mission and then I'll, you guys can ask me questions and stuff. Um, but we can start with the prayer. Um, I don't know. Let's do it. Uh, I'll call on someone, I guess. Um, Dad, do you want to give a prayer? All right, unmute yourself. All right. Father in heaven, we're thankful for this chance that we have to hear our Dallin speak. We're grateful that he, he was safe in his return. Heavenly Father, we recognize that there are a number of um, awesome people on the call. We pray that uh, thy love will be felt and that we will be able to support one another. We're thankful for our family and our friends and, and all those that have made life special we pray for each individual on the call that um, we would be safe watched over and we would be able to reach out as we need help we pray for thy spirit to be with us and we pray for a uh, an end to the virus that we can um, receive the blessing of of finding a, a, a cure and that the people that are working on it on the front lines that they will continue to be able to be strong and, and have thy support we love thee we recognize thy hand in our lives and we say these things in the name of jesus christ amen amen thank you um so yeah just a rundown so i hope you all know i was serving in argentina argentina rosario um, I left in July, on July 9th of last year, 2019, and I got back about two or three weeks ago. I think three weeks ago I got back. Um, and getting out was pretty crazy. So with the, the virus and everything, um, it wasn't super big down there. I've heard now there are more cases, but when I was leaving, there wasn't, um, there were hardly, hardly anything, hardly anything was passing or was going on and I left my second area which was Arrocho Seco an awesome place and I arrived to my third area and once I got there that's the that's when I really started to hear about the virus I was reading about it a bit more just kind of world event stuff that it was really big in China but then when I got to my third area I was with a new companion and it was slowly our phone we just had like a crappy little kind of Ikea phone and it, or not Ikea, Nokia, <laughs> Nokia phone. And we would just get texts and eventually we were getting texts like every 10 minutes just with updates with like what was going on, what we needed to do. We had to go out and buy a ton of food. We had to prepare stuff. Um, and eventually we just heard news that we were gonna be going into full lockdown in Argentina or just quarantine, but to the point where you couldn't even leave um, without a permission slip or without without authorization and so that basically we just got put in that that quarantine and we're in about and like with the missionary work it just kind of started everything just kind of shut to shut down we had to at first it was like we couldn't contact which was for us not contacting on the mission was super hard it was hard to find new people and then we couldn't um go by people's houses without them knowing, which is pretty common in Argentina. We just passed by people's houses. So we couldn't do that. We could only pass by if we had appointments. Um, and then after that, it was basically just like spending more and more time on our pension in our apartment. And then eventually it came where we just had to be in there all the time and we couldn't leave for any reason. Um, and then about three or four days of that, we heard, we got a little text on our phone that, um, Pretty, pretty crazy, just a message that said all missionaries um, will return to their place, will return to their 
place of origin, um, which would mean that I was going to head back to the States. My companion was from Peru, that he would go back to, to Peru. Um, just crazy, just a small, small message that wasn't expected. Um, yeah, I really just kind of, kind of rocked us. It was just crazy. Yeah, just receiving a text we were like about to eat. Just like reading, he like read it and was like started reading it out loud. And then he stopped reading it and just like read it silently. And I was like, what? And I just like grabbed it and was reading it. And I remember I just started, I just started crying. Um, not like bawling, but I was just, I was so sad to leave to leave Argentina because it's a place that I love so much. And I would just got to this awesome area. There was a ton of awesome members, and I was super excited to to meet everyone and to to have success there and to build the world's kingdom. But with this virus, you know, everything, they born everyone. Um, and so that was a pretty sweet experience. I got a blessing from my companion um, just immediately after that, after that, after we got the news. And that helped me so much. I got a priesthood blessing from him and he just blessed me with courage and strength and um, it kind of took this this moment of uncertainty of fear of what's going to happen and turned it into a moment of of faith of okay the future is is unknown but it's going to be something really awesome um, and I knew I'd get the opportunity to serve again as a missionary I'm still waiting for that but it'll come um, and so then leaving the country with be crazy we couldn't like i said we couldn't leave for any reason so we they basically just told us to um the day after we got that message that we were all leaving they told us to basically just clean everything because um because there's going to be a whitewash which means they're going to take us both out and they didn't know when the next missionaries were going to come in they didn't even know if, if our apartment was going to be used again for missionaries so basically it was like we were moving out but we didn't know uh we basically just had to get rid of everything and we bought so much food so we were like calling members, having them come in and pick up all this food that we had bought. Um, and then we waited about a week um, until we heard, we got word that the American missionaries were all leaving. Um, it's a tough process because you have to work it out with the Argentine government, with the United States government, and the church has to work it out. And then you have to work it out with like the airport and all that stuff. So the church actually chartered two, I think two airplanes really big airplanes to bring all the missionaries home from several missions in, in my part of Argentina. Um, so that's kind of, that's how I got out. <laughs> and we took a bus and we basically were just praying and, and really hopeful that the police wouldn't stop us and that we would be able to make it to the airport safely. And we did, we made it pretty safely. The police stopped us a few times, but um, it was never for more than an hour or an hour and a half from here. We were able to keep going. Um, and so eventually we, I got on the plane with only missionaries, about 300 other missionaries, and headed straight for Salt Lake, spent a night in Salt Lake, and then the next morning headed for headed for Dallas. Um, and actually the day I arrived to Texas was the day where the news was released that all missionaries coming home would be tempor temporarily released from being a missionary. So that was definitely news because I wasn't expecting that, but um, so now I'm I'm released. I'm a I'm a normal person. Uh, so I can like all the stuff I can do as a missionary, like swim, text, use like be alone. I can do all that stuff um, for right now. So it's kind of weird. It's been weird um, being home and adjusting, but it's been really awesome to to be home and see family and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of how I got home. That's the coronavirus stuff. So I guess right now also. Um, but my nine months, about my nine months, a little less than nine months in Argentina were awesome. Um, I had three areas and four companions, um, in the field. Well, in my mission, I had four companions. I served in a place called San Lorenzo for two transfers, about three months. I served in a place called Arroyo Seco for about four months, four and a half months, for three transfers. And I served in Amagino for about three weeks. About one of the weeks was outside. Um, but 
I loved all my areas. I think I might say my favorite area was at Rosh Hashanah, my second area, just because I was there for the longest. Um, that's where I could speak the language the best, or the best. That's where I kind of picked up the language and got used to Argentina and became more than just a um, someone who was being trained and just really started to kind of, things started to kind of kick in my mind. And um, I think that's where I really started to just grind as a missionary. That's where I started to, um, you know, get bold, get confidence, get, you know, I was able to speak the language. I I had, immediately when I got there, I had to kind of put some stuff on my back and um, carry some loads and um, play a role that I didn't think I'd be playing. Um, but it was just awesome. I love Ar- Arusha Seiko. It was, it was super hard, especially when I first got there, but I I think I grew so much in that area, like in all my areas, but I really grew a ton there. Um, and yeah, Argentina, where I was serving, it's pretty, it's actually a lot like, and like the climate and the way it looks outside and stuff like that, it's a lot like where I live right now, like Texas. It's su- it's flatter than Texas. If you, it's got good humidity. Um, it's not the prettiest place in the world. I've heard it described as like, I had one one buddy on the mission who was like, dude, Argentina is so cool. Like huge country. It's like I think Argentina like bias maybe, but I think it. I feel like it is one of the most beautiful countries in that it has like hot desert with like cool rainfalls, and then it has like beautiful mountains and snow um it's just a ton of different areas but uh, one of my buddies on my mission described it that we pretty much had the kansas of the kansas of um argentina so it wasn't the prettiest place in the in the world but it was really awesome and it definitely has my heart um and so yeah that is argentina i had um half a winter and pretty much a full summer there got pretty hot but it was awesome working in the summer and knocking doors and um definitely um, not a first world country where i was serving third world and i think in parts there's definitely um poorer areas um some areas that were were nice um but just a different world completely um i would be walking some days and or people would ask me be like oh it's so different from the states right it's so different and it's weird because like there are times when like oh yeah it's like not different at all it's just like um like we do this in the states we do that there um but there are some times when you're just like this is another country this is like not the states this is or this is not where i'm from like this is just something way foreign to me which is super awesome i love that i love being in a place that was just way different um and it was really fun once you got used to it kind of after your training that where you would just start talking to people and they'd be saying whatever things and you would just understand them. They'd be, um, they would just be giving you like weird directions to, and you just like know exactly what they're talking about just because you'd kind of been accustomed to the way they talk, to the way their mannerisms are, to just the way they work, which is really cool to just be immersed in another country and another culture um, that is is very different from from ours. Um, so that was just awesome. Uh, I love the Argentine people. Very, um, not the, the softest people all the time. Very, I mean, they'll tell you like, your Spanish sucks or you're fat or you're way skinny or you're ugly or stuff like that. But they're super sweet. And I was talking to a buddy today and he, he was served in South America too. And he was, talking about just how the people are so giving automatically and it's true you just walk into a house or um, you just sit outside and they just are immediately offering you water I never once got turned down when I asked for water on my mission from people they're just super super giving super loving um they always want to talk to you just maybe not about the church um which kind of sucks sometimes when you like just really want to talk about the church and really want to share a message with them and they're just asking you how the the states are and <laughs> and how long you're staying there and all that stuff. And if you have a girlfriend and stuff like that, but, um, but super awesome people. I'm super blessed that I was able to, able to go there and serve there for, for so long. Um, 
and just see a great a great change in myself. Uh, I feel like I saw I was on a call today and I said I feel like my mission wasn't one of just insane miracles just were just breathtaking. Rather I feel like it was a mission of just the way God works of just subtle miracles of kind of if you're not paying attention, if you're not really looking for it, if you're not humble, you're gonna miss them. Um and I feel like even like even now I look back and I see miracles I didn't see before. Um of just times when it was super hard and then we found someone good or times when everything was bad and just a small thing was okay. Um I probably had my hardest days some of my hardest days on the mission, but definitely had some of the best victories too. Um, and just growing and learning how to become a disciple of Christ, becoming consecrated, giving all my efforts um, as a missionary. It's a different beast when you're out there in another country and you're just, you have to face the fact that for two years, it's just um, kind of putting your will aside, putting your, your, your natural desires um, off to the side and just kind of working and, and becoming a tool in the Lord's hands. And that's what I tried to do. Um, and that's what I'm super excited to keep doing on the mission, but also in life, just becoming a consecrated person and always trying to follow, follow Christ as best as I can. Um, what else? I don't really know what else to share. Maybe in the end, I'll share my testimony. I can share it in Spanish and English. Um, but I think- Maybe questions, though? No? Yeah, I'll go with questions now. I don't think I have anything else to share by myself, but please ask me questions because I'm not very good at just talking. So I'll, I'll start. What were some of the ways you saw people change? Some of the ways I saw people change? From your message. Um, there are a lot of ways there, something big I saw my mission, um, is a lot of people say they want change or a lot of people where I was, I think it's like here too in the States, I just haven't knocked doors in the States or like talked to a ton of people like I have as a missionary, but people where I was in Argentina would always talk about how bad the world was and how bad things were and how bad their lives were. Like they would just complain a lot and it was kind of frustrating because you'd be like, Hey, like like let's change it man like let's i have this message changing message that's for you guys um and oftentimes like honestly people would be like you would try to share with them but they would just keep complaining they couldn't get past the fact that that their life was tough and they weren't focused on making it better but then that's why god is preparing people and that's why he puts us in situations where we talk to people who are ready so there definitely were times when we talked to people who who were ready to listen to us and who were ready and willing to change. Um, one of my favorites was this woman named uh, Ramona. Ramona was, um, we found her, I was in Arosho Seiko in my second transfer there. Um, I just got my companion out of Ashcroft. He was just a machine, just a beast. And we were going super hard one day, um, just talking with everyone we could. And we ended up talking with this lady named Ramona who was taking care of an elderly, elderly woman. And she, we taught her the first lesson just like right there on the doorstep. We just sat down and she totally loved it. And it, she was just, um, I don't, it's, she was just um, elected of God. I don't know how that would, I feel like I'm saying that wrong in English, but she was just totally meant for us to find her. And she was pretty, um evangelical just in her in her mindset she'd been she'd gone there for a long time but had had bad experiences and we um with her she she immediately picked up the book of mormon so fast um she like, actually has probably more faith than anyone i know she's crazy she's awesome and she was really not understanding a lot of things we were teaching she was funny because she was like believed it and she really felt the power and the strength of the Book of Mormon, but she didn't really understand who was Joseph Smith, that he was a prophet. She actually, she was funny because she like believed it, but she, we would ask her, we just like to make sure she understood and she, she wouldn't really know. Um, 
but over time just through reading the book of women through continuing teaching her we just saw this huge change in her when we found her she had a lot of problems um she was a single mom she had to work six days out of the week full-time like literally full-time where she lived in with this woman um and she couldn't go to church on sundays but as she made sacrifices that's a huge thing as she made sacrifices as she read the scriptures every single day looking for for things that would bless her life and applying them to her life i saw we saw huge changes in her we saw strength to kind of talk to her boss and be like hey i'm i'm gonna go to church on sundays um we need to find a way where that's possible and she just made changes in her life to fill her life with more light and she was later baptized um, because of that and she you could just see so much light in her eyes um really just a product of her faith of her faith and sacrifice and she just became something someone even more incredible than she was before and that was that was a big change i saw in the mission um other examples i never i never had a huge um person i never had like a huge experience when i met someone who was just like a huge drinker a huge smoker or stuff like that um but definitely people through sacrifice i have seen people quit smoking and i have seen people stop doing things that are just natural right we live in a world where where things like that are so natural it's so natural to not go to church on sunday it's so natural to to um talk bad to your kids <laughs> to talk bad to your wife to talk bad to to those around you but i really did see huge change in just men and women who when we started meeting with them were just natural people um but by applying the atonement of jesus christ they really were changed and just through sacrifice even through a little sacrifice if we could get people to to go to church once or get people to read the scriptures, just try it, just sacrifice a little bit. We saw a huge change. We saw big blessings from that. Um, and I know that that change comes through through Jesus Christ, that his, his atonement enables us to do that. And, um, and that was just amazing to see, even small change on the mission, just people understand concepts, understand principles from, from that we were teaching. Um, find people gain testimonies for themselves that the book of Mormon is true that there's a living prophet on the earth that was change i saw that was huge that change actually i feel like that change getting a testimony is what made the other change possible what made them what made them stop smoking what made them go to church what made them be kind to others what made them um i don't know what made them do what they had to do to follow christ was getting a testimony that was a long answer, but a good question. Anyone else have a question? Another question? Hey, Dale. Oh, why don't you share um, uh, the story about the rainy day? Okay. Um, this was a, a big miracle I saw on my mission. Um, one of the times where I feel like I was pushing my limits and I really saw blessings for it. Um, like my dad said, it was a, a rainy day. <laughs> we, I was in my Arosha Seiko again, and I think my second transfer still, kind of towards the end of my transfer. So when I got to Arosha Seiko, it was, it was kind of a dead area, right? There wasn't, um, there was just like no progress. We had one friend who was awesome, but more than that, we just, it was just really hard. Um, and my companion really knew that it was hard in this area. And so for a long time, it was just kind of trying to to motivate him, to motivate myself to just, just keep going and go out and, and try to change the game in this area. Um, and eventually I got I got another companion who was just awesome, Utter Ashcroft, um, probably my favorite companion on the mission, just a workhorse. And he, one time we were trying to find this less active member um, and we we're in Arosho Seiko is like a little city, but it's really small. Um, we were in this city 
was like our our that's where we live but then there's like a big field and then there's a small little neighborhood of about four blocks and so what we did is we went over there i've only been out there like before this i went out there once and it was just like not a great experience but this time i went out there and as we were walking over there there was a ton of clouds like in the sky and so we were like um if we if it starts to rain out here it's not gonna be good because we're just basically on an island um and sure enough it started to rain <laughs> and it was kind of like a texas rainstorm where it just poured and poured and poured um we like knocked on doors we asked for like bags for like our scriptures we um were just soaked and we just kept knocking doors we knocked on that the less active members home and they weren't there um and i was just like um maybe we should go back i just felt we had actually had an experience earlier where we were in the rain and and it didn't it was just a weird day it was like not a great day and so i was kind of having like flashbacks to that day and i was like oh i don't want that same thing to kind of happen um in the rain where we're just out in the rain wet and cold and feel weird and so i was like all right we have in our city we have some members not many but we have some so I was like we could just go to go visit a member real fast and kind of wait out the storm um but my companion he's just awesome he was like no man we're he just had a ton of faith and he's like no man we're gonna keep um let's just keep knocking let's just keep going and i was just kind of feeding off his um his motivation his his excitement and it was pouring rain so we were like i don't know we're just kind of going crazy and we all the streets are just mud and we're just running around in our full church clothes just completely soaked um and we're just knocking doors knocking doors like crazy trying to pick doors that have like cover so we're just not like being soaked as we're standing there and we're just knocking on these doors and no one is obviously no one's opening to us we're soaking what we're dripping and people are just looking at us like we're crazy because we are and they're just like they're just like you like i'm not gonna shoot my house like what you guys doing they're like looking at us really worried we're just like we have a message we want to share with you and they're just like nah <laughs> go away and they're just like shut the door and we get to almost the last the last um the last stretch of houses um and we were just knocking doors and we finally knocked into this lady and she kind of like opened her window and she was like hey like what the heck what are you guys doing <laughs> and we were like hey like sorry we're missionaries um it's really wet outside it's raining a lot um would you like to hear a message and she kind of was like uh no like obviously look weird like you're super wet um and we were like i think i was pretty much just like would you offer some refuge for some people who are really wet from some servants of the lord and she was like okay and so she let us in she let us in her house and um we were just i felt so bad because we were just so wet like we just created a huge puddle on her floor and she was just super nice and we sat down and we just kind of started waiting out the storm and we started talking with her and just a cool approach because sometimes as a missionary you have you know you're knocking on a door and they're just like what do you want what are you what are you doing and you just kind of feel rushed the spirit might not be there you're just relying on your own on your own um knowledge or whatever but this was really cool because we just kind of sat down and we're like all right like we're in a house. We kind of pushed through the rain. We're just in here. Um, and so we just started to talk with her, just like normal people, which is awesome. <laughs> and we just started talking with her. And she said, um, she just kind of opened up to us. We were just talking about like what was going on in her life. And she just opened up to us and said basically that her, you know, her son, um, her teenage son just didn't really have any direction to his life. She's a single mom, um, and he would get into a lot of trouble, and it was really hard for her. She didn't have a job. Um, the bank was calling her constantly, um, just kind of with bills she had to pay. And she had a lot of stuff going on in her life, was out of work for like two years. Um, and she just basically told us that she had looked into, looked into the church, or not our church, but she'd looked into religion before. She'd actually been to like, pretty much every church in this area except for ours um and it was just like she just admitted to us that 
she was low on faith. She just said, I don't know, I just don't really have um, a lot of faith. I have really sad, it's a true thing that happened. She was basically just, I put my trust in God before and I've been let down before. Um, I've looked for God before and I haven't found him. Um, just a really tender, tender conversation. And basically we're just able to share with her words from Alma um, and Ether about just choosing to have faith and about acting on faith too, putting our faith in the right places, putting our faith in Christ. And she, um, she really just opened up to us. We were able to talk with her and set another date to pass by. Um, we passed by later that week and, and shared with her about, about Joseph Smith and about um, the restoration of the gospel and about God's love for all of, her, all of his children and that, that bad things happen to, to people and that doesn't mean that God doesn't love us, right? That doesn't mean that he's not there, it doesn't want us to succeed. It just means that, that this world is, is hard, that we have trials, right? Um, that this world's not perfect. And over time, we saw a big change in her. She came to church that first, that very first Sunday, which doesn't, that did not happen in my mission. People didn't come to church like that, but she was just, she always said, yeah, I don't have a lot of faith. I, I'm all on faith, but she was so quick to act on her faith or at least to try it. She was, she would read her scriptures when we'd invite her to, she would, she's just really open. Um, and yeah, it was just awesome. Her name is Isabel, Isabel, and she's awesome. I call her like my Argentine mom. <laughs> she's a super sweet lady. And she, um, I eventually got transferred out of the area, but she um, was going strong when I left. And I heard, I called Elder Ashcroft, my companion. When I was there, I called, I called him when we knew that we were gonna leave and he, he told me that she had a date to get baptized. Um, that she was progressing well, that there were a few things, that a few more sacrifices that she might have to make, um, but that she was looking, that her faith really was there, that she was growing in her faith. Um, so that was just a big hope, just a time when I was just two missionaries just working in the rain. Um, a true testament that God does love all of his children, even the ones who live far <laughs> Um, it was cool. I just like walking back to our house afterwards. I was like, dude, that was crazy. Like, cool. I was like, that was crazy. Like we just like two American missionaries out in the, the boonies of Argentina, just out in the field, just knocking doors in the pouring rain. And we just found someone who, who was willing to hear a message that we have to share. Um, it was just super awesome, super awesome experience of knowing that God loves us and that he cares about all his children. Hey, I have a question regarding service projects because I know you did a lot of them. Did you find um, changes in non-members' attitudes towards you guys? Yeah, we, yeah, for sure. We, um, yeah, we were totally like, we got to a point where we were just dying for service because it was actually really hard to find service opportunities. Um, and we definitely did see a change in those people. Um, whether it was like we would knock doors and they'd be like, no, I don't want anything. And we'd see that they're like building their house and we'd be like, hey, can we come build your house? And um, maybe they'd even be like, no, no, it's okay. But like sometimes they'd be like, uh, yeah, sure, I'm going to be working on it like this time. And it would always lead to us being at least friends, right? Like um, there's a stat my mom always shows me where it's like people oftentimes talk with the missionaries or have, have contact with the missionaries or members of the church about seven times before they're baptized um before these things really sink into their hearts and it's kind of like that like oftentimes we'll find people and the people we become friends with are our friends because before maybe other missionaries or members of our church have talked to them and been been really kind or offered them help or helped them out in hard situations and that makes their hearts open so even when when we've served people who who weren't members or when we just done small acts, people people realize that, and it really is a big deal for them. And they are definitely more willing in the future to listen to missionaries and to to always talk with us. Like I I would always knock doors and people would be like, oh like, 
like Chico was like, I'm not interested. Like guys, I'm not interested, but I like, you guys are awesome. Like I respect what you're doing. A few like years ago, like she talked with a few missionaries for a time and they totally helped me out with like my house and in my yard and stuff like that. And, and helped me out when I was in a bind. And um, so, yeah, I definitely did see huge change in people and just by small acts of service. And I think that's really big for us right here too, is just small acts of service really do soften hearts and create friendships. Awesome question. I have a question. Yeah. What was your favorite and least favorite food in Argentina? My favorite and least favorite food. My favorite food is this food called asado, um, which I think is kind of famous for Argentina, but it's just super good. Um, it is like awesome. It's like kind of ghetto. It's so sweet when people, because like everyone, everyone from the rich to the poor makes it. It's just basically it's just meat, but they just like the way that's just so awesome is they'll just start a bunch of coals and lay them all down on the ground and then they just lay down a rack just a metal rack and then they just throw down a ton of meat on it and just pour like a buttload of salt and then it just comes off just tasting like so good just like you just sit down you would just sit down they have like it's just a plate filled with meat and they're just like enjoy like like eat without shame and just you can just eat so much of it and you feel kind of crappy because you ate a ton of meat but that's awesome that is that was the like the best food for sure um I loved it. It was just so an awesome thing that everyone would do. Um, so asada is my favorite. My least favorite is pretty weird, but well, I don't know. There, there wasn't a lot of food I didn't like. A lot of the food is really it's pretty much all Italian. Um, the food, um, which is different from what I thought. But I hated, I hated so much. I hated this food. It's called, um, it's a food called pan dulce, which is like sweet bread. But it is like the worst thing. I hate it so much. It's like it came out at Christmas time. I think it's kind of like a seasonal thing. And it's like this processed bread that comes in like a sealed bag. And then it has like oh, it has like this nasty pieces of fruit inside of it. Like, but it's not like oh, I like can't even talk about it. It's so gross. I would always get so mad, and people would always like give it to us, and I I literally could not eat it. I, I started to eat it in my first, like, one time in my first area, and I could, like, kind of get it down. I put it, like, in my bag one time when they weren't looking, like, oh, I hated it so much. I I am not a super picky eater. Def like, even during my mission, I feel like I wasn't picky at all. But, like, I could not eat that on my mission. It was just so bad. Um, and that was one thing. I also hate olives, and there was a lot of olives. Um, they put olives, like, all over their pizza. The pizza there is not the pizza we have here. It's way different. Um, and yeah, I hate olives and they put that on a lot of stuff. So that was another thing I had to avoid. But pan dulce and olives are the worst, but asado is the best. Good question. Dallin, I think that's called fruit cake at Christmas. And it, it does look gross. Never had it, but I think it's like a fruit cake. You're probably talking about. It's probably something similar. Yeah. You told you said like a lot. Just tell people like you say knock on doors, but that's different. How do they really knock on doors in Argentina? Sometimes you do knock on doors. Um, like sometimes the doors are just on the street. And you can knock them, but a lot of times you you clap, um, which is kind of cool. It's like a I think it's a pretty South American thing to do. A lot of times people have like gates. Or they might not have a door, they might just have like a curtain in front of their door. And so you just put your hands together and start clapping. Um, I don't know, that was a pretty cool one. I love that about Argentina, just how you just go clap doors. And um, I don't know, it was cool. It was cool than knocking doors. <laughs> hey, Dallin, what yes. would you say your mission president's theme was as you worked with him and you saw what he was about? What would you say you either learned from him or what was uh, something that he focused very heavily on? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, my mission president is a beast. His name is President Allred from Utah. Classic. 
Um, but just an awesome guy. And he he had a lot of themes when I was there. Um, and I learned so much from him. I think the biggest thing I was in, so he actually comes home or should come home. I don't know how it's going to work with the virus and everything, but he should be coming home in, in June or July of this year. So he was kind of in his last year. Um, they served for three years in the president. And so um, with him, I think the biggest thing I learned from him is just the personal conversion is so big, right? We always, as missionaries, we just love to talk about baptism. I need the cameras off. We just love to talk about the baptisms. We just love to talk about, um, about you know, the mad success that we're having, the crazy miracles we're seeing. But honestly, my mission wasn't really like that. I did, there weren't times when I just felt like, there were times when I was just baptizing hundreds. I never had a, I, I never physically was there for a baptism of one of my converts. Um, and I, that was a tough thing for me. And one time in my, and one of my transfers that was just way tough where I felt like I really was me and my companion I felt like we were just doing everything but we I mean we knew we weren't perfect right we knew there were things we could do better um, we could show you throughout our day things we could do better but we were like actively just trying to be better we would make the changes we were just trying to have success so much success and I just got to the point where I was like why are we not having the success that that we've been promised as missionaries right um it was just a hard thing and he was like elder it's not he's like he's like it is about the baptisms but three years from now or something like that when we're in a reunion like a uh war or a mission reunion it's like we're not gonna be talking about the baptisms he's like sure we'll talk about like here and there and awesome stories we're we gonna be talking about how we changed how we became better disciples of christ um and i feel like that I don't know how my mission president was like in his whole three years, but I feel like even in my short last year with him, I feel like he, I saw even it's just like a little change of him just start focusing on what was really important on just the personal conversion on his big thing was entering get seven. It was taking the sacrament every week was becoming a disciple of Christ through taking the sacrament through repentance daily through applying the doctrine of Christ. Um, having faith, repentance, being baptized or partaking of a sacrament and just having a relationship with the Holy Ghost. He was just always preached that, especially in this last few few interviews, few um, zone conferences and stuff like that. Just really taught personal conversion and applying these things to our own life um, in obedience. He was super, um, super about obedience. I, had, I think I had a really strict mission president, which I actually liked. I think it was good. Um, but he was just super awesome, true disciple of Christ, and taught me a lot about obedience and, and personal conversion and consecration. That's an awesome question. What's the plan for the future, Dallin? My plan for the future? I... Yeah. Um, that's good. I, so the two options for you, those of y'all who don't know, I can, um, so when I got home, I got news that I would be temporarily, temporarily released. And then on the 30th of April, I have to make a decision by the 30th of April. And my two choices are I can choose to go back out as soon as possible. I guess as soon as conditions, um, conditions are good. Um, I can go back out and serve again, but I will most likely be assigned to a place here in the United States um, to serve. And then, and I'll, I will keep my original end date. So I'll, I'll be finished by July of next year. Um, I'll be finished by July of next year. But the other option is that I can choose right now to kind of stay, stay put, stay released for a, 12 to 18 months and I can change my end date. And I've, hear, I've heard with that second choice where you will put off your end date and choose to go again in like about a year. Um, I've heard that you can um, go back to serve in your original mission, um, which I don't know if that's 100% true. And also that has to do with if 
we can travel and stuff like that with with the virus and stuff, how long this lasts. Um, so those are kind of my two options, but I've prayed and I've, um, I've thought a lot about, about which one to choose. And I feel like option one, where I just go back out on the mission as soon as possible, um, is just a better option personally for me. Um, I started school before the mission and um, I set aside these two years for the mission. And I feel like if God really did want me to, to go back to Argentina, um, I would definitely, I would obviously do that. But I do feel like God has called me to the work, not specifically only to a place, um, and I feel like I can still do the will of the Lord by serving in and wherever my next mission will be. So I'm right now I'm just waiting to, to be reassigned to serve in the United States. Um, and yeah, so I don't know when that'll be. Um, so we can, it says we have to have our decision ready by the 30th of April. Um, and uh, I don't know, I'm sure it'll take a long time because we have to submit our decisions and then the the prophet of the church and the apostles have to reassign us um, in the same process that they assigned us in the beginning. And so that'll be a long process to assign all the missionaries. And then we have to, of course, receive a date to go back out. Um, and all that is under the basis of of you know if this virus is if we can go out because i mean i don't really want to go back out if i'm just going to be waiting in a house still um i mean i do it but i don't know i feel like i could be as effective from here um so that's what i'm doing right now i'm just waiting to to submit my decision and to go back out as soon as i can um dallin when when the mission's all over are there any Argentine members or fellow sister missionaries that you might pursue? <laughs> uh, right now, no. Okay. Um, Tyler, if you know anybody. I don't know anybody. If you know anybody. I know you'd save them for yourself, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty much, no, I'm just chilling. People ask me that, like, when it was, like, way funny because I was going home with all these missionaries who were, just, like, who were going to be finishing their missions, and they're all talking about, like, dating and, like, getting married and, like, crazy stuff like that. And I'm still, like, I got another year or more to serve my mission. I'm, I'm just going to go chill. Uh, one of my buddies was, like, are you going to, when you go back, are you going to go on dates and stuff? And I was, like, I mean, not including, like, Breathing about the virus and everything, and I was like, uh, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I can. That'd be way too weird. As like being a missionary and then like coming home and then like going back out and going again. I don't know, maybe, but probably not. If you know anybody, you might email or something. <laughs> but for right now, nothing. Good question. Good question. <laughs> Anyone else have a question? Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe just like bear your testimony in English. Just All right, I'll finish with my testimony. I'll do it. I in... just keep asking those questions throughout the years for yes. Dallin. Huh? Tyler might need to keep asking you those questions throughout the yes, years do that. when you get home next summer, too. Tyler's going to yeah. be kicking my butt. He's going to make sure I'm, <laughs> I'm on it. Yeah. Wait, Dallin, I got one for you. Is, is Hawaii considered open game for the U.S.? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. That'd be sick. Fingers crossed, boy. Was that Fingers a humble crossed. brag right there? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's hope. Uh, it's 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 wishing water. and hoping. <laughs> yeah, turn, Spence, you got to turn around and show everybody the, the view outside of your window. <laughs> That's where I got reassigned to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so catch me serving in your in your local community soon. Hopefully, that'd be crazy. 
Um, but yeah, I'll finish with my testimony. I'll do it in Spanish and then in English. Um, pero bueno, uh, estoy muy muy agradecido por la oportunidad que yo tuve para servir en, en Argentina en esos último, últimos nueve meses. Um, sé que Dios siempre está pensando de sus hijos, que él nos importa muchísimo, no, él nos ama. Nos ama suficientemente para enviarme a Argentina, um, un otro, otro país, otro continente, para predicar esta palabra, porque este mensaje es el mensaje más importante en todo el mundo. Um, sé que cambio es posible, que todos de nosotros tenemos la oportunidad para cambiar, para ser mejor que fuimos ayer, fuimos en el pasado, que podamos lograr um, nuestros sueños, que podamos lograr nuestro potencial, que Dios tiene una vista que es diferente de, de nuestra. Sé que estas cosas son posibles por medio de la expiación de Jesucristo, que es todo por medio de, de la expiación, podemos arrepentirnos, que podemos ser limpios del pecado, que podemos tener familias eternas, que el poder en los templos es posible que tenemos todas esas bendiciones que tenemos. Sé que la iglesia fue restaurada por medio de, del profeta José Smith y que hoy día tenemos un profeta viviente, um, Rousseau M. Nelson, que es el hombre con, con la autoridad de Dios para, para llevar la palabra, que es un gran ejemplo de eso. Sé que Jesucristo vive, que Él sufrió, que Él murió por nosotros, que un día todos nosotros vamos a, vamos a vivir otra vez. Um, y ojalá que, que vivamos como una familia en el reino celestial. Y les amo muchísimo. Y ese es mi testimonio en español. Y en so my testimony. Um, in English, I I know that God loves his children, that he is aware of all of us from the islands of the sea to here in Texas, to wherever you guys are, to in Argentina. He loves all of us. He cares about all of us so much. Um, we don't even know it. I know that the Book of Mormon is true. It's the word of God, along with the Bible, that the Book of Mormon really is an extension of the love that God has for us, that he gave us this gift um, along with the Bible to guide us, to help us find him every day. Um, and I promise that as we read it and study it every day that we will see the light that comes from, from studying the Book of Mormon, that we will feel the spirit in our eyes. Um, I know that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God, that God restored the church, the true and living church to the earth through through Joseph Smith, that this is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, the same one that Jesus Christ had when he lived on the earth. I know that uh, President Russell Nelson is a prophet of God, that he calls missionaries to serve, and that the message they share is true. I know that Christ lives, that he suffered and died for us, that he made all of this possible, that there truly is no other name under the heavens whereby man can be saved except through the name of Christ. Um, I know that is to be I know that to be true. I know these things are true. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Jesus Christ, I thank you guys so much for for honing in, for being being awesome, being my fans. Oh, no, I'm Darren, I'm Darren, Darren, I'm Darren. 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 All right. Uh, did you see any, like, disgusting creatures that you just did not want to touch? The dogs. 
No, just, don't want to... no, just creations. Just like. Yeah, that's the dogs, man. Oh. <laughs> dogs aren't the dogs. They're just. Well, they're creatures. like. That's fine. Well, there's not many Yorkies in Argentina, so. Yeah, that makes True. sense. Yeah. None as cute as this one. Bye. <laughs>